A new study shows that uh, IoT devices are the cause of the increased DDoS attacks. So, Ganesh, you got some interesting information about uh, DDoS and, uh, and the IoT environments? Yes, Tony. There's some report by Nexus Guard. They recently put their DDoS attacks reports. Uh, the crux of the report is basically how the size of the attacks as well as the you know duration of the attacks increased. It's basically due to the presence of various IoT devices. The slide I have, the first slide here itself, is the one slide they started their report itself. Okay, so this is from the Nexus Guard report. It's from the Nexus Guard, and I felt it's really interesting. If you look at basically, they given a Q2 overall size of the attacks as well as the duration and comparing with uh, Q2 of 2018. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the numbers, I mean, the little triangle arrow, they all seems to be trending upwards except for in the total DDoS attacks, there's a little bit decrease, about 25% compared to 29% in 2017. I tell you why it's not a big deal in this case, but as you can see in this case, the maximum size is grown up to 359 gigabits per second. Wow. And So do you know how they're measuring these? I mean, do they have uh, they ha some means uh, of, of measuring? This is being measured in terms of, you know, how much traffic they're seeing in gigabits per second when they're seeing some sort of attack. For example, uh, NTP-based attacks. Mm -hmm. What is the size of the attack they are seeing it? But uh, they, I think they uh, break down by the by the area of quarterly. So I'm, I'm not familiar with Nexus Guard, but I'm sounds like they provide DDoS protection services. They do. And so they collect this as the person who would be directly receiving the brunt of these attacks. Yeah, Got I think it. uh, uh, it's not per... Uh, uh, per day, but they, I think uh, they accumulated on the basis of every quarter. Okay. Like a quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and they kind of uh, came up with these numbers. Okay. So as you can see here, in the first one, quarter two, 2017, they're 463%, and quarter one, they said 12 point increase from that specific number. Right. And the average size is 26.37 gigabits per second. So wait, I'm up 463% from 20, this uh, second quarter of 2017. That's, so even that's then, insane. Yeah, even compared to 463%, the still we have seen 12% increase in... Uh, okay, but that's also for maximum size. So I, I can see size. a single massive DDoS attack throwing those numbers way out of whack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And similarly... Uh, oh, well. Yeah, compared to 2017, if you see 543% increase in the size... That's just that's as impressive. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Insane. And compared to 65 percent, I'll briefly come back to total DDoS attacks, but I'll come down to DDoS attacks year to year and quarter to quarter comparison. Even here, we can see there's a definite increase in the various types of attacks. In this hmm. case, UDP attacks they have gone up to 88 percent from 66 yeah. percent. And in case of uh, TCP, I think they uh, purely saying about the scene attacks. So I mean, it looks like most of them are up except for application attacks are consistently down. Mm -hmm. So what do they define as an application attack? Application attacks could be, you know, we could see HTTP as well as HTTP, like in the case of blended attacks, they might be using leveraging that attacks. Okay, so these are more like protocol level. Protocol level. Like just TCP, UDP, not even yeah. bothering to speak anything more complex than I that. I think in, in So mostly like volumetric attacks, it really seems like. Yes. Like you, you wouldn't bother to like find some sort of uh, server vulnerability for a, denial, for a denial of service. You're just throwing traffic at these guys. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. I, I think uh, that's why they're alluding to the uh, total packet size to be 26 gigabits per second. All right. And with that, these are the, some of the interesting stats I felt, you know, worth mentioning here. Mm -hmm. uh, the top three DDoS attacks, they're pointing it is uh, UDP, obviously. And they said TCP CIN attacks contributed about 18%. Yeah. And ICMP, you know, most of the times when some sort of attack going on, we always see some sort of ICMP traffic going on there too. Okay. So there are no surprises here. Uh, and the combined total is about 60% of all the DDoS attack traffic they have seen. The, those top three vectors comprised yes. about 60%. 60% of what they have seen. Uh, and in case of single attack actors, 
Uh, they said 52% of the total attacks, and while 48% are multi-vector. In this case, multi-vector could be blended attacks. We can say, like you may say, in the NTP as well as 53. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be, you know, NTP as well as, you know, sin flood attacks. Yeah. You know, you can mix and match, you know, various types of attacks. Yep. Uh, but in this case, I'm surprised. I thought uh, the blinded multi-vector attacks would be more compared to the single vector. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're close enough. Uh, so I think the math is about 50-50 if you round yeah. up. Yeah. And coming to the multi-vector attacks, obviously NTP application, they are the king for a long, long time. Mm. And uh, obviously ICMP, UDP, uh, it's no surprises here. Uh, UDP and NTP amplification. In this case, I think even though UDP and NTP, they're part of the UDP, they meant to say UDP as volumetric and NTP as reflection, I guess. Okay. Uh, that's, that's my guess. That would make case. sense. Okay. Uh, also, CLDAP reflection, we have seen a little bit last year too. Oh, all right. Uh, CLDAP is nothing but uh, uh, UDP version of the LDAP. They mm -hmm. try to exploit the port 389 UDP instead okay. of TCP. It does sound familiar. Okay. Okay. And UDP fragmentation and TCP SYN, these are the numbers they gave. Uh, and the, the fourth bullet point is uh, very interesting to me too. The attacks, typical attack lasted for 90, 90 minutes, mm -hmm. for about 55% of the time. Uh, the average duration was uh, 318 minutes. I think uh, it's a little over five hours, I guess. 318 minutes, yeah, a little over five. A little over five hours. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the average is due to some attacks lasting for days. They observed one, one specific long attack for six days and plus, you know, five hours. Uh, yeah. uh, I think uh, that would be outlier, I guess. Sure. Because you know somebody wants to keep uh, keep the website constantly done for you know mm -hmm. extended period of time, that would be the case in this case. That kind of uh, you know sometimes uh, screwed up the average packet size, but uh, that's how the nature of the you know DDoS attack, right? Yeah. Uh, most of the attacks, about 64% of the attacks were smaller than 10 gigabits per second, uh, but that number increased by 543% to 26.37. Uh, the increase in average size to 26 gigabits is uh, uh, due to the larger payload used by these IoT devices. Okay. For example, um, in the case of Satori and these all these IoT-based botnets in the last one year or so, we have seen actually the TCP SYN payload of a very, very huge payload. Like it's in the ballpark of 800 to 900 uh, uh, packets per uh, payload. Uh, for the typical, you know, it's it's definitely an outlier. Well, oh, let's say let's see that again because packets per payload for a SYN attack sounds like I mean SYN packets are single single packets, right? Yeah, typical. You can put a bunch of data in them; they yeah. wouldn't be really valid at that point, but you could do it. Yeah, but uh, as as you understand, in that case of TCP handshake, in the first thing you will be sending the SYN packet in the vicinity of maybe 40 to 60 bytes, and mm -hmm. that's a typical normal payload. Yeah. But uh, some of these IoT botnets, they figured out to send, you know, larger payload uh, as their, you know, initial uh, request. Okay. So instead of the typical request, they were sending in the vicinity of 900. So what it does is basically that caused the increase in the size of the average size. Got it. So there's still an advantage to putting a bunch of junk in your SYN packets, mm -hmm. and that's to, to affect the, the bandwidth of the, of the network that you're operating on. So whether right. or not it's valid traffic, if the network has to handle it, that's just more traffic for mm -hmm. it to look at. Yeah, m most likely, you know, most of the organizations, they let, you know, the initial handset to go through if they're not really paying attention to the size of the payload, right? Mm -hmm. So they have a chances of uh, sneaking under the radar uh, to carry out. I think that's my theory. Okay. But it's it's debatable always, right? Uh, and the last one is um, they given the statistics of how the breakdown of the attacks, sources of attacks. It seems uh, North American region is the top one, followed by you know Asia Pac, uh, usual suspects like China, I think Vietnamese. Okay. These are the some of the interesting stats I gleaned from the, you know, the attack reports they provided. Based on that, uh, I have a couple of graphs from our you know telemetry data. I would like to show you guys. Before you go into those graphs, um, I did have a question on one of your, your okay. stats. Um, the difference between uh, single vector and multi-vector attacks, um, is it more, I mean, how much more complicated is it to do the multi 
the multi-vector attacks? Because it sounds like to me you could do a lot more damage with those, but it may be more difficult, and, and that's why we're seeing the single vector. And it's because and, it's showing 50-50 kind of on an average. So I was just curious about that. Uh, I mean, programmatically, it's not that difficult. You're giving another parameter to you know, include it. For example, instead of pure scene attack, you could say a scene attack as well as some sort of you know blended attack like uh, amplification of uh, NTP as well as DNS. Mm. Okay, this uh, this graph uh, I'm showing in the last 365 days with respect to NTP port port 123. Uh, here, uh, the timeline as well as uh, you know tra attack traffic in gigabits per second. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's times one, nine, but it's basically gigabits per second. As you can see here, the average in this case we could see about five to four to six gigabits per second, uh, which I think uh, last year they were saying uh, they're seeing about 60% of the traffic less than 10 gigabits per second. So is this necessarily DDoS attack traffic or is it just a measure of the uh, NTP traffic? It's not necessarily DDoS, uh, DDoS attack traffic, but okay. I've been generalizing with respect to NTP okay. amplification and traffic. I would imagine that anytime you see a significant increase in it, it, it's not because everybody needs the time all of a yeah. sudden, it's because someone's abusing the yeah, protocol. Yeah, but the, the outliers here you're seeing, they're definitely some sort of uh, amplification attack going on. Okay. Yeah. But if you take out those outliers, the traffic seems to be, you know, pretty much, um, you know, we can correlate with what they are seeing mm -hmm. with respect to amplification, but not necessarily attack traffic. Okay. So, and the last one, actually. Oh, wow. We, um, this memcache, this is the big thing at the start of this year. Mm -hmm. um, this has a huge amplification of 10,000 to 50,000 times. Right, because you can basically ask for the contents of an in-memory database yeah. all at once. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think this is the time, uh, in the start of the February time frame, that's when actually it came out. And we have seen a huge spike above 140 gigabits per second. Oh, wow. And after that, it kind of fizzled out. I think everybody jumped on it to you know, fix it. Right, right. Uh, but I'm happy to see it's not as high as the others, but... Uh, I thought we should look at this memcache because it has the highest amplification factor. You know, it is nice to see, though, that you've got that high amplification factor, but also you can tell from the graph that it, even though it was an effective attack, it seems like the, the internet community as a whole has yeah. mostly dealt with it. Yes, uh, that's the whole reason I wanted to show this yeah. graph. All right. Well, thank you. This has been is interesting, and I think I want to read the rest of that report now. Okay. Thank you.